All right, and we back. Welcome back to the B Worm and B Phil podcast. How's everyone doing? How's everyone feeling? We got the guys, we got the gang. How did I hear that? We got the bros, the family, the mob. We got Ghost. What's good? We got West. Hey. We got Ace. So, I got myself, Quest Lando. <sighs> Guys, how we doing? How we feeling today? Tonight? Well rested. That's what I mean. I like to hear it. Yeah, a lot going on during the week, but uh, chilling. chilling, same, chilling. same here. One day we're gonna like get into, or maybe low key later we'll talk about some personal stuff, but yeah, I can relate. Everything straight, Ghost? Yeah, I'm good. Not much going on. But, um, before we get into the topics, before we get into everything, is there anything we wanna get off? Anything we wanna get off our hearts? Anything we wanna get off our chest? Halo Infinite downloading in the background right now. <laughs> Man, everybody, everybody's on that Halo Infinite. <laughs> yeah, actually just reminded me. And I'm not mad at it. Halo is the last of the Mohegan Sun, or whatever they say. The best uh, first person shooter. For sure. Um, before we do get into anything, it's not necessarily get off our get off our chest, but. We can't just girl step past, you know. We had a, we had a, a outing this week, a pop out. Salute to the pop out guys. Me and Ghost pop, me and Ghost popped out, and uh, we dipped as soon as we left that function, that event. So we didn't really, I didn't really get to get the feedback. But yeah, give us give us a, a nice a recap on it. Give us your your, give us the ghost hot takes, or the ghost recap. Not too much background. Let's keep this short. <laughs> and and actually, before you even answer, or before you give the recap, what do you what do you think in general? Was it black Air Force energy or white force Air for Air Force energy in India in and the, in the uh, at the event? Wait, you don't know you're muted. Jesus, Joseph, and Mary. Oops. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> My bad. Uh, I said uh, white. Okay. Energy. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, for um, the reason we were out there is because uh, Quest's boy. Swan. I'm good to say his name. Yeah, okay, yeah. Hell yeah. Shine. Um, he was performing that night, headlining. And we went out supporting. I never heard his stuff before outside of one track. And he was probably the highlight of the event. They kept calling but, him the, the feature. <laughs> yeah. Here and that, here and that. But what I wasn't aware of is that he was only doing about two five minute sets and the rest of it was was basically open mic night yeah and we were there for like what two three hours yeah and some of the acts were some of them were good um there was our sister who sang i think she was the very first act yeah the boy t swan that dude at the end like the new york drill that, that was dope but yeah some of them, man, this, this is why I don't go to open mic, because <clears throat> uh, I won't get into all of them. I'll say the two low lights. Yeah, me. we don't have enough time to get into everything, but yeah. <laughs> One was the dude who like had like the oozy energy, like that <laughs> angsty, yeah. don't trust anyone type by which... Uh, is whatever. It's is that the guy that his people. record was literally Don't Trust or something like yeah. that? <laughs> yep. And it, that was his album name too. 
<laughs> but the kicker was, the dude looked literally like he was 45. I'm not even exaggerating. Like, he was way, way too old to be rapping about that. <laughs> rapping in the style that he did. So that was something. And then the other one was the... He was one of those uh, real lyricists. Uh, I'm not about the young boy energy. I got stuff to say. All that is whatever. And he wasn't awful, but... He, after he did his first song, he felt the need to go a cappella, basically spoken words, and repeat his first verse word for word, yeah. line for line, bar for bar, and spell out all of the bars and the punchlines and everything, oh, just God. so we can what? all That's get a handle much. and a grasp on how no. profound it is. <laughs> Which I, I just I was just kind of sitting with my eyes wide the whole time because that's just like I don't think I've ever seen that. It was like so condescending and was that was genius. that the guy that said do we do we do people still respect real lyrics or something like that? Yep, and you put a hand up, you still respect real lyrics, respect real hip hop. By the way, he was a quote unquote lyricist, or whatever. But when he rapped it the first time, he didn't. We we got it. We, he didn't say anything like exactly. amazing. <laughs> He was one of those lyrical, miracle, spiritual, individual type rappers, but, but we he got didn't it. have nothing profound to say. So it wasn't, it definitely was not worthy of go through it again. Shit, Nas did that, Nas, Kendrick did that, like real lyricists did that, I would be pissed. And this dude <laughs> was not on that level, so. Yeah, th- those are the two low lights for me. Mm-hmm. But overall, I mean, it was dope to go out and do something. But Wait, I, so I, you said there were you said there were singers? Like it was it was true. There was like singers. There were singers, and... rappers, po- poets. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are also like, interesting. But yeah. Yeah, I, just I want... mean I will say that despite the slander, I do give my props to everyone who went out there. Do yes. I clap for everyone even if I was not feeling the stuff at all. I, give them I, don't know, I don't know if I would have clapped for the explaining. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 when we go to some of these events, I can't help thinking about, like, some people got to get booed or else they're just going to continue to do this. Nah, I mean, you don't got to boo them. It's just, I think the lack of feedback it does it more so than anything else. Because that, that old dude, everyone was kind of, like, lackluster when they clapped for him. And they went crazy for the dude before him. You could tell he was a little pissed, but... I, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm kind of with it. You got, you got like, I mean, people sometimes gotta get booed. <laughs> nah, you know, don't boo. I mean, f- feedback and just discouraging is kind of separate for me. Like, you got, you had the balls to get up on the stage and do your thing. I, do, I, I'm with you. I respect that too, but it's just, uh, he's gonna, these, he's go, the he's people. going to go back on another event and do that right. same thing. You can't, you can't he got signed that apparently. Too. So, I mean, oh, yeah. Like, good for him. But, well, yeah, some people are assigned talent a bit. Well. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to do your, your uh, recap, go. So I could go, I could give my own uh, recap, but we'll be here all night. Because I, I observed everything you peeped and, like, a million more things. Like... <laughs> Oh my gosh! From the homegirls that were rapping uh, to to the eight Man. mile, when eight mile dude, <laughs> eight mile dude uh. wasn't awful. He was it was a little much, but like you don't need to tell your whole life story, dude. But yeah, it was that homegirl that was like the, on the city girls energy. Yeah, <laughs> Man. Man, but I um, <laughs> like I said before, or like you said before, it's just like yeah, ultimately it. Regardless of anything else, it was interesting to like pop out and you know have a quote unquote good time with your homies. So yeah, let's, we'll uh, we'll do more of that, or at least I said like once in a month because I don't know. My paranoia was kind of peaking at some points in the time. I'm not gonna even cap like I'm mean, that's just me. Um, but yeah, yeah. Wait, dope, wait, wait. Dope. Was there was there food? Uh, mm, maybe there was a kitchen in the back, but they didn't really they didn't present it as such. Me and Ghost actually got there early. Can you believe it? 
uh, and then we dipped out and got Chick Fil A, and then came back, and then we were still waiting to, for the event to start. So, um, and then like throughout the event, like some people were like, they must have been like uh, door dashing or like ordering like takeout because some people were like bringing in food and stuff. But I think it was mostly just a bar. All right. Uh, yeah, and uh, spoilers, spoilers, and this is just this, this is putting it in the universe. But I actually talked to my, I actually talked to um to T, and uh, I talked to him, like in the future maybe even be on the podcast. So, you know, Lord's oh. will that Lord's oh. will that happen, that'll happen one day. Oh, uh, but if there's nothing else, let's get straight into the topics. We got a couple hella interesting things to talk about here. Uh, blow it up, little ace, if you can. All right, the first John we got is a little science fiction John. You know, we're gonna start off with something that a little out there. Um, and honestly, maybe I'll just play the video before I kind of dissect what this is about. Y'all, y'all go with that? Okay, let's just uh, play it. Inside this church is a robotic prayer companion. My name is Santo. What brings you here on this beautiful day? Dzień dobry, Santo. Nasze bliskie, które są w niebie, mają kontakt z nami. Let us pray. Santo is programmed with 2,000 years of knowledge about the Catholic faith. I think it is impressive. It's a bit like Catholic Alexa. Do you think that it gave you a satisfaction? Powerful. So basically, you know, we're in 2021. Nothing shocking, nothing surprising. And, uh, you know, we're starting to see a merge of, I mean, not starting to see, but I guess this is probably the first of its kind in this sense, a merge of technology, specifically artificial intelligence in the churches. And uh, it just brings about a million and one different questions. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, I mean, as you saw in the video, I mean, the, the main utility is just, um, and this actually like, um, cause this came from, um, the BBC news. There's actually a, a, a larger article and a larger video, but, um, basically, uh, they're implementing these, uh, what, how do they describe it? Robotic, uh, pastor prayer companions. Yeah, exactly. And it basically, you know, you tell, you give it a response or you give it a question or a statement and it'll respond. Again, using AI technology. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I don't even know if this uh, super philosophical question here. Um, what, what do we make of this? Do you think uh, there is a a use or even a need for a technology <clears throat> like this in churches? Or is this just uh, going to take us down a uh, wrong path? We'll start with the, uh, start with you, Bills. What do you, what do you make of this? They could get a magic eight ball and it would have the same <laughs> utility. <laughs> oh lord. I, I already knew this is a high energy what y'all about to be on. <laughs> can we it's can like we please Catholic. You, you already knew. Uh, I'm <laughs> Well, I mean, that is the thing. I mean, that that but... aside, that aside. <laughs> yeah. Cuz I was going I was going to say if that is like a contention point for anybody, um like I said this came from like a, a bigger article. They also are going to they also read something like this in like a uh, Jewish faith based churches. Um, so they're, yeah, they're not just put, they're not just sticking this thing into um, Catholic churches. They're, you know, and they were using it for different types of churches. Um, but while it might just be out something that we may not necessarily uh, be on the same uh, page with, you can't rest up at the fact that it's a, it's an AI program. So they're using, they are using like, like, they're using the scriptures. They're using history. They're using all this data and information to give back responses. Yeah, it's Jokes not aside, unlike. This is. Sorry, I'll, I'll let you. Finish. Oh my! I was just gonna, I was just say jokes aside. This just it seems like a a scam. Yeesh. It's literally the point of pastors to listen to people and then respond with their knowledge. And if you got a robot doing it, a robot that was programmed by people, and these people are 
paying money to be in this church. It just seems like a scam to me. Sorry, what were you saying, Ace? I was gonna say, um, while you do make great points. Sorry, I accidentally muted myself. Um, while you do make great points, it's not unlike being able to look up or Google scriptures and or if you have a question, like in the example, a lady asked, do our loved ones um, try to contact us or something like that? And then the thing said, let us pray. I don't know what the prayer it was going to be, but I would imagine <laughs> it would be something, maybe a scripture related to the question based on the, the AI. So while I don't think a praying robot is uh, makes any sense <laughs> having something to, to help you uh, find scriptures or find things related to the questions you're asking that I mean it makes sense because we, we do it all the time um, couldn't you literally just use Google for that though you could so I mean I think this it seems kind of specific to the Catholic faith that something like this would work because I almost feel like they have they have a system in which like baked in or um, uh, how would you say it like like almost like there's a prayer a specific prayer for specific questions or for specific um, specific situations or, or so is having something programmed to spit back that prayer like hail marys or all you know stuff like that um it makes i could see why it would work for the catholic faith opposed to us question mark yeah because when we pray i mean yeah what we will say the lord's prayer and things like that but we also still you know we'll ask for specific um blessings or um or forgiveness for specific sins or things like that so it doesn't like you said before what if it's just a what if it's just a question what if what if you don't actually ask it for a prayer what if you just ask it hey um what did the lord say about the sabbath yeah i, I don't think anything would be necessarily wrong with that it's just the prayer aspect <clears throat> that's kind of weird to me like it, it i couldn't see it working for me and, and it's also obviously weird where general. none of us are ai specialists but you don't think after speaking with something for enough period of time that it can give you a uh what's what i'm looking for um a personalized prayer personalized <laughs> a personalized pan prayer i guess you could I build it in overestimating eventually. the strength of this ai no you could build I'm it in. i'm overestimating the strength of I'm overestimating the strength of a the power of AI. Yeah, yeah I'm not saying AI in general. I'm saying this specific one. Because uh, the Catholic Church, I, don't I think, think they could. That... I think they can go as far as they want with the technology and the Man. and the AI. Y'all acting like they got the top engineers and scientists on top of this. No, like... they just have no he's acting like they got the money <laughs> for the top yeah, engineers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. One other thing I was going to say real quick is that this isn't necessarily new to the Catholic Church. Um, I'll pull up this quick picture. They had an automaton that was built in like the 1500s that would like... Excuse me? Yeah, that would like walk around and um, it did something related to, to prayer. I can't remember how exactly it functioned. but What's not, What kind of Assassin's Creed nonsense is this? Yeah. I'll have to include this article in the um in the thing. Make sure you send me this link. Alright. But yeah, yeah, obviously it looks scary as freak, but <laughs> I don't know I don't know why Catholics uh seem to be into this type of stuff. Catholics seem to be into a lot of stuff. <clears throat> uh what about what about you, Wes? Do you have any uh thoughts on that? It's a Babylon thing. <laughs> I'm not with it. I'm not with it. Oh, but um, no, I think the point that Ace made was was right. Like you can, you could create a specific database where it's 
I mean, you, you could create a, like an app or, or program or whatever, specific database with specific topics, and it could answer. Uh, you could type it the question, it could answer the question. Like, and I don't. I think there could be value in that. Just like you know, load in obviously the Bible or some type of um, some type of keyword search and some type of um, interpretation. It's basically like Siri. It's basically like a Bible Siri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that, given that you put in the right parameters and the right method of interpretation, or even cite your source of interpretation or stuff like that. Um, so I, so I let me, so good. tell me what the problem is here. The problem is, well, the, pro, the problem is creating the, the image, the, the weird uh, robot face. Go back, to, go back to the thing, Ace. Also, I, thought it was just, I thought it was like a little bobblehead looking thing. Well, whatever shape you want to put it in, it's weird to me. <laughs> what if it's the shape of a, uh, uh, quote, yeah, what if it's the shape of a quote unquote pastor? No. They, they actually, they actually, they I actually make made it worse. They actually I'm, made it look relative. They actually made it look relatively, um, like unpersonalized. No, my thing is, I'm, I think, homogenous, maybe, maybe 99% against making any technology look like people in a um, general sense um so yeah i mean i think a program works fine plus i don't really want to be led in prayer by a machine yeah you, you guys pointed that and maybe we're not gonna get into that tonight but that's interesting i is that like i mean surely that's not like against the scriptures but <laughs> it's, it's not kosher though like what, what's the line <laughs> Like what? Well, like what if some? Like what if you listen to a recorded prayer? That's it's, that's to me that's different. Like I feel like I feel, I feel I don't know. I just I just want to separate technology in that sense from um, from like worshiping or praise or anything like that because I, maybe it's a personal thing. <laughs> That's um, fine. Yeah, I feel like it should be with people or alone between you and the most high. I don't know. I don't feel like I really feel like involving AI in that, or not AI, even technology in that sense anyway. But if I know a person recorded the prayer and I know what that person is saying, I'm with it. But, or I could be. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. Um, a couple things that maybe worth adding. I don't know if they, they don't just say it here, um, but I did see as part of the article they do mention the fact that this is not meant to in any shape or form replace pastors. It's just meant to be an aid, so to speak. Because ultimately, some people, believe it or not, feel more comfortable talking to an inanimate object than a real person, especially if they're, you know, maybe confessing things. <laughs> They gonna have a robot listening to confessions. Oh my goodness! Hey man, some people. Like, I mean, some people like, go through some real deal stuff. That I, they I'm, not, I'm not. Feel, I'm not. I'm not comfortable I'm not, conveying to another person. Yeah, I'm not bashing the people. I'm just. I, I feel like the Catholic Church at one point or another. It wouldn't surprise me if they did have some robots in the booth. Set up. The thing is, though, to cut corners. Um, <laughs> if if this is connected to the cloud which i'm sure it is i don't know that it's any more secure than a person <laughs> so, yeah you can get just, hacked <laughs> just saying why do i feel like this has a futurama <laughs> reference <laughs> i feel like there's definitely a reference for that for this type yeah. of thing Hey man, we always talk about how in the future a lot of jobs are going to be replaced by uh, robots. I mean, it passes the job at the end of the day. But, um, yeah, all the same. So it seemed like it's a resounding nobody's here afraid of robots in the church. Or at least in this kind of capacity. Uh, which is, which is fine, I guess. Uh, although I think it still is a sign of things to come. Whether you're with it or not. Uh, I think some of y'all that go to church uh, be on the lookout for this in the next in the coming years. Um, 
But if there's nothing else, we can uh, we can move on. Y'all see that comment at the bottom? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> hey, man. It's what it is. All right, so we got an article. Uh, and this is from Yahoo News. Young people, or maybe it's from BuzzFeed News. I would like to make sure people get their proper credit. But anyway, uh, young people, especially young women, are reporting concerning medical and behavior changes due to social media. And I hope we're paying attention. So uh, I believe you brought this one, Wes. Um, break it down for all of us. And what's, the, what's the question slash commentary here? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it was a minute ago. But um, if I remember correctly, can you scroll down a little bit? And blow it up a little. Yeah. Yeah, so there was a, or there's a condition that certain people have, and it relates to having ticks. Um, and I guess, well, I guess, yeah, I guess it was, um, it was threats or maybe related um, syndromes or whatever. And so I guess they were recording TikTok videos of, um, themselves dealing with this um this situation and people other people watching the videos were also coming to have um similar side effects and similar um conditions so the article is basically about whether tiktok or these things can be spread certain neurological diseases and stuff, things like that can be spread through the consumption of social media um, and I think it was like, you know, especially there was a particular uh, increase in this type of stuff with uh, with TikTok and especially with people being home the past year and the pandemic and stuff like that. Uh, so that was kind of the thing that was um, was alerting people to the, the situation. Um, but it just it's a, it raises the question about the um, the dangers too much social media and uh how impressionable and how much of an effect it can it can have on people because uh, it sounds kind of wild to hear that people can contract a neurological disease from watching tiktok videos but it speaks to impressionability and things like that so so just so i understand and just so everyone listening understands this article is talking about like this like data or studies or whatever to show that more people are showing symptoms of these um of these disabilities or whatever you have whatever have you because they're more exposed to it via social media yeah and it's a it's a a neurological i think that's how they described it neurological disease it's a um you know a, a disease of the mind Or the brain, I should say. Interesting. This might be the most insane thing I've heard of since learning about Alzheimer's. I, this is yeah, insane. I'm kind of blown away and surprised this isn't like bigger global news. There's a disease. I mean, I guess that's why the, the article head. I guess that's what the article the article headline said, and I hope you're paying attention. <laughs> What do we uh, so what's the question here? How do we curb it? <laughs> is there a curve? <laughs> this yeah. is like um this is like those those email things where it said if you watch <laughs> it or if you listen to it in whatever amount of days if you don't pass it on, you're gonna get it. Jesus. Except you're just gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> like the ring. <clears throat> yeah, but there's also the thing I think it was in this article. Again, sorry it was read this a while ago but i think it was also in this article that said like there's a sense in which people spreading their um or spreading awareness about certain conditions that they might have can be positive in order to just you know kind of make people 
aware <laughs> of the conditions that exist and, and not feel so isolated. Um, but on the other hand, if this is happening, then there is a question of how to deal with it. Um, this is nutty. This is wild. That's a good point, too, because I've watched videos of people talking about their rare illnesses and things like that. Lo and behold, I can catch them <laughs> if I watch it. Yeah, I'm about to say, you don't have any, that's from my knowledge, you don't have any rare illnesses, so it's not like you'd be watching it because you want to relate. No, it's just to learn about it. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I yeah, people who, people who have something can see it in other people and feel more, feel less like they're an isolated case or feel less alone or whatever. Um, so it, it has that, it could have that benefit, but if there's a so, risk of this, then how do you... So, I mean, and, and I and I guess my apologies, and now you're getting some of the background, I haven't fully dissected this article, but is it a matter of people are literally inheriting a disability that they did not previously have or they weren't fully aware of it, and now that they're more exposed to it, their symptoms are starting to be more uh, uh, present. Because I think it's kind of a hard sell for you to tell me you could be a perfectly <laughs> fine individual. And not to say that people have these disabilities really aren't fine, but you could be perfectly fine beforehand, and then you consume media, and now you it would it would be like the ring. It just literally be like a horror movie. Yeah, but how would you know? All right, so hold up, hold up, <laughs> hold up. Let's uh, let's. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read a paragraph here. Uh, let me see. According to Jargon's reporting in previous research, this development involves mostly young women, and is heavily influenced by how. That's the scary part too. Yeah, by how often they watch TikToks from influencers who said they had Tourette's syndrome. The movements are sociogenic, meaning they are developed socially, but have profound and real neurological effects. Patients had physical jerks such as neck twitches or were compulsively and involuntarily repeating a word like beans. Okay, uh, question mark? What <laughs> did you just say? So, it says that there's so the movements are sociogenic, developed socially. So, I guess that answers that. But I don't know. It feels like yeah, like you said, it feels like there's. Should be some type of susceptibility beforehand, and that it wouldn't just affect anyone in that demographic, like young women. But it's it's kind of hard to see from the way that they're they're writing. This I don't thing. think we know enough about neurological e science. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting because I I'm, I'm trying to like to analyze this, but I'm just not a I'm just not a bio engineer or medical in the medical field. But my brain still goes, still goes like a million different places. Like, uh, uh, ha have they done tests or are they doing tests for like people that you know are don't have these symptoms before and then they look at these videos and then they get it. Um, also, like the article says, it, it more it's more likely to impact young women. So, um, uh, does anyone want to deep dive into why, or are we gonna leave that alone? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I was thinking too. Like, it must have some to do, something to do with the neuro neurological makeup of the female brain. I think people would argue that there is no difference. But we're not gonna make us. We're not gonna. <laughs> there is objectively a difference. I'm not touching that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. My honestly, I would love to. And I'm not cutting this off. I would love to deep dive more into it, but I just, it just makes me want to do more research more than anything. Um, I guess, does this raise a flag in, in any of y'all to where y'all would recommend y'all future daughters to maybe avoid social media? <laughs> like, what, what is the... What is the of course. Lunch I'm thinking about it for myself. Honestly, Shoot. I'm listening to this and it sounds fake as hell. Like this sounds like there's no way this is nice. actually got a it. thing. I like I like how you know we were on different sides of the spectrum here. Although they have they did did you not hear what he read though? It's almost damn near proven. Yeah, it said it's from the Wall I Street mean, Journal. You got to do the dig the dig, yeah, but you do the dive. yeah, it 
it sounds like a lot of speculative stuff. Like, I mean, yeah, it I could think, be proven, I think, but I think <laughs> some, I think some testing would have to be done. Are you risking it though? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the, that's the other question. Like, is this test like ethical? Would the test to like prove this out be ethical? <laughs> is there is there a cure for this if you developed it socially? That's a good question. Do we think that this could? Cause I do think about things like this all the time. It's like the fact that we have more access to information. In a sense, we have it's it's obviously we know the benefits, but we also don't even realize the fact that there are just some certain certain things that we aren't like that we um that we become conscious of like. Like you mentioned, it's like there are certain things that I've like watched videos on and there are conditions that I weren't privy to. And I'm relatively well-rounded enough to not fall susceptible to it, but I have heard people like they hear about some some new condition and then they like, they think about all the symptoms that they like they might have experienced. It's just like, if you don't know the- The WebMD syndrome. Yeah, like if you don't know the, the, um, the symptoms to I just used the, the biggest one, uh, you know, COVID, and then all of a sudden you do, and then you start thinking about, hey, that's one, that's Monday. I, you know, I can play something or whatever the case may be. All of a sudden, you might, it, it, it's just, uh, it becomes, it can become your, your reality. Uh, so yeah, I'll read basically, some, I'll read something real quick from the International Parkinson and Movement Disorder Society. There's a uh, an abstract from a, an article here. I'll just do the conclusion. So the conclusion says TikTok ticks are distinct from what is physically seen Great name, by in way. patients with Tourette syndrome, although share many characteristics with functional ticks. We believe this to be an example of mass sociogenic illness, which involves behaviors, emotions, or conditions spreading simultaneously through a group. A modern clinician needs to remain abreast of social media sources as knowledge of media content is essential in managing patients in the current environment. So they're saying it might, it's, or they're treating it as distinct from Tourette's. However, it is a, an example of mass sociogenic illness, which is, sounds pretty wild, but I guess <laughs> that's what they're calling it. Oh, you know what? There was this other thing I heard about where back in, it was probably like, after the plague, like around another oh, time, yeah. where people were laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would probably be another. To one. death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Are we talking about the bubonic plague? Yeah, it was. I think it was sometime after the plague, though. Like, but around that time, and people were catching, laughing, and yeah. they were laughing themselves to death. And then I think it was some Joker Romania, shit. I think. Like, well, that's not. Anybody, but what was that? I think people were just upset. Let's not go into too much of a deep dive regarding. Uh, no, nah, but it just it makes me it, it makes me realize that there very well could be diseases that you can catch that are neurological that don't seem in any way communicable, but can be caught. Yeah. Yeah, I I tend to believe that. <laughs> um, yeah, but there's a lot I think of like... I think the question comes in is if that if that is the case, is there a certain level of like mind willpower that you could have to prevent this, or is, is anyone susceptible? I mean, I, I think I, don't know. I think the just look was... away from your screen. <laughs> yeah, that just turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like these sociogenic things, though, like when people, when a bunch of people fall into some type of pattern of behavior, or even like in some cases consumerism or whatever, um, it seems like more than just a. I don't know. It just it just seems different from like, a, oh, they're doing that. Let me not do that, or let me look away, or let me. I don't know. It, it seems more. Neurological, like they say, or like they're, they're describing. I'm not saying it's. A, I don't know. I'm not saying. I'm not trying to simplify it down to that. I'm just saying, if it's if it's something that transferred just 
like so by social interaction. I I'm I'm, I'm just asking. I wonder if you is this some, if you could curb it by if you have a, a different mentality opposed to other people. If it's not, then that's fine too. I think one of the most stories is if you weren't aware, you be aware now that you can catch disabilities via via social media, basically. <laughs> That's just what it is. I'm not saying you will. I'm not saying you should lower your, your social media consumption. I'm just saying it happens to humans. And it very well could happen to you. Yeah. And I, and I feel warm and feel uh, uh, some news that you may or may not have known. Um, is there nothing else we can move on to the next joint? But we are continuing the trend of social media and uh, some real life uh, consequences. So, man, man, this is sad on all levels. And it's interesting because I think we actually talked about a story about this challenge. I don't know. We'd be talking about a lot of things. But basically, this headline says, uh, uh, I don't want to mispronounce this sentence, his name, but Lariana Jackson charged with second degree felony battery for assaulting a disabled teacher for viral TikTok challenge, facing 10 years in prison. Lord Father. So, yeah, and uh, I think, you know, this this story was reported earlier about like um, how there's a viral cyber teacher uh, challenge uh, and it grabbed, it grabbed, you know, everyone's attention. Uh, some some story some details about the story. Uh, Eighteen year old Lariana Jackson. Again, sorry for my mispronouncing his sister's name, but I mean at the same time, she, she's kind of evil. Of uh, Covington, Louisiana, is facing at least ten years at least ten years in prison for a role in assaulting a physically disabled teacher as part of a viral cyber teacher TikTok challenge. Saint Tammary Parish District Attorney Warren Montgomery confirmed earlier this week that Jackson was charged with felony second degree battery and cruelty to a to the infirm. Her arrangement will be held December 8th at 9 a.m. at the 22nd Judicial District Court. Man, this is a uh, man. What what disease? What 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 what's the name for the disease of uh, doing uh, evil things for a sake of vir- for virality? If I'm even saying that word right, or if that is a word. Um, for a royal multitude to do evil. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, there's not really much of a question here, um, or, you know, maybe just more of an update, but it is super, like, sad to see that, and I don't even want to get to the mugshot, but, uh, yeah. it is kind They're of not super to get her no sympathy. It is super sad to see people, uh, you know, the way social media influences people to do evil, uh, but at the same time, we all have the we're saying this from a standpoint of like first of all we lived you know lives before social media we you know have upbringings that you know would have curbed this nonsense altogether um and we're like we're like older now so do any of us in any way feel uh I guess I'll use say the word sympathy even though I know that's what the answer is going to be for this for this young sister who most likely didn't have that upbringing, didn't grow up without social media, and is still a young child, basically. Uh, I'll, leave the, it, I'll, I'll, the, I'll leave it open. The, <laughs> the, the only thing that I can say is that whenever I hear stuff like this, and we're talking about sympathy for a young person's life, 10 years. I think about homeboy. Ooh. Brock, or whatever, Turner. Brock Turner. <laughs> yeah. De- Demon devil. White devil. And he got a, we don't want to ruin this young boy's life by giving him time and doing and giving him a record and uh, all this stuff. So, that's the only thing I can say is like, Make sure you dole out the punishment fairly, but and ten years is but it's eating up a disabled person, so and she was eighteen, which is legally an adult, so <sighs> I don't know. 
Yeah. I mean, I know some people don't like to get into that conversation, but especially when it's, we're talking about evil all across the board. But yeah, I think they're definitely going to, I think it's definitely just a matter of looking down uh, on cold black people for uh, for our crimes as opposed to when uh, you know, white people do things. Case in point, what's happening in the current news, but we don't got to <laughs> talk about that either. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's just, you know, a shame all around. I, if, if, I mentioned sympathy earlier. The main sympathy uh, and like prayers and stuff should go out to that that teacher. It's like that's just like I would say being a teacher. Being a teacher is one of like the most selfless, like when you're in the right for uh, jobs ever because you're literally being responsible for uh, a whole bunch of kids and like damn near influencing the way if somebody could grow up in the out- the outcome in life. So um and. And the level of like things I have to deal with. A TikTok challenge where you slap me for no reason. Put all the teachers out there. <laughs> yeah. Um do we know not that it matters particularly, but do we know if it was just a slap or was it more? I mean the t- the, t- the challenge is called slap a teacher. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. That's, I think uh, that's I'm wondering the only... if like That's, I mean, it wasn't a light tap. I'll tell you that they, they don't give they don't give a, a felony charge. Right, for, right. This is something that damn near required the teacher to uh, receive medical attention. Yeah, uh, and I, also like again, not to not to shoot bail, but kids assault teachers. It's not infrequent. <laughs> Man, I could tell y'all some stories. I seen <laughs> teachers and students square up back in the day. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I mean, I get, yes, it's obviously wrong, and especially for a disabled person. But I don't know that I've seen this level of uh, this level of, of uh, punishment for this type of. Yeah, I think I think the I think the disabled aspect really is what is the the nail in the coffin yeah. that really is, is doing her. And, and her age, I'm sure, which I mean, yeah, only a certain population of high school students are actually eighteen. Only seniors usually. Yeah. Ultimately, while we could look at we could you know look at the the aspect of this is a young person and you know there are some factors that went into why they did this. You cannot avoid the expression of life of. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Every time. I mean, yeah. ten years ago, like <laughs> I'm again, I'm crime. with y'all in that. Yeah, this is wrong and all that, but people literally get less for rape. And you're telling me that and for child hours. abuse in ten years. Something don't seem right about that. Well, to be prison, fair, to be fair, it does say human. facing. Well, it does. It says facing at least. It says at so, least. Okay. Facing. Yeah. So Wait. that no, no, but it says at least. So. At least. <laughs> that oh, means they that could close, get right? more. That's yeah. Right. That's, that's insane to me. That doesn't even sound right. Yeah. I didn't again, know they could again, charge I, ten years for assault like that. Again, I think it's all the parameters around it, and we're and this is not a, a, a law legal podcast, but again, doing it for pure viral malicious intent. Uh, a disabled person. I, I I don't know law, but I'm not surprised that a, a DA would come to a DA would say, "Hey, we need to make an example and give this person a book." Even if I don't agree with the ten years, I. I anyway. mean, you had kids doing the. I, I mean, kids were doing this challenge for. A quite a while, and you haven't heard anything like this punishment. Kids were doing the whole um what are they the devious licks where they committed larceny or how whatever it's called and you didn't hear any punishments like this so like it, it's been going on for a while and that's not to excuse it but i'm just floor 10 years for hey man. assault long person, that's long person long person long time that 
Yeah, but as you don't got to get into also, it. yeah, and if you if you if you right. know somebody somebody's physically disabled, it takes quite a bit to to go assault them in any way. It, it does take a, quite a bit of evil to. Mm, that's a good point. To do that. Yeah, I think I think you summed it up good earlier about it would be ideal if you know the the, it, the punishments were dealt equally across the board. Don't you don't don't ever, don't ever think that would be an excuse for you to get off. Because if this sister might think that she might have got will get off free, scot free, or with a slight punishment, but that's not the way the world works at times. But anyway, yeah. Salute to that teacher. Salute to all teachers out there. That's all I got. The next joint. Oh, what? Oh, come on, dog. You exit out one of the things. And honestly... Control shift T. We can... This... I'm low-key thinking... We're still going to talk about this. This might get cut because I feel like I, we could end up going a little distance with this. But this is going to be another thing. Let's just roll the clip and then we'll deep dive into it. Uh, I, mean, I saw this on the timeline a couple weeks ago and my mind went racing. So I was about to make a TikTok, and my daughter came in with this. Sassy. Mom, I'm going to tell you this before they tell you this, because they're going to say a lie. Because you know how you told me men are providers and protectors, right? Men are providers and protectors. So that means they go outside and work. Okay. Right? Okay. Right? Yeah. So you know how David's dad stay home, right? Yes. While David's mom goes out and work. Okay. So they was bothering me talking about all the other stuff and I was like that's why your dad's a bitch. and then he's like I'm gonna tell your mom blah 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 so I was like okay but I don't want you to be mad at me because I call because he stays home while his wife is working they want to speak to you downstairs that's <laughs> 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 God bless the youth. They don't even understand. To be honest, they don't even they don't even understand their ignorance. Uh, it's gotta yeah. be scripted. There ain't no way it's to, to get to the to get to the um the point of the matter. Um. Uh, you know, we we see a a a, a young a young child coming and talking to their mom about the situation they got into. Um, and yeah, admittedly, it does feel. Or it does seem that there's some level of scripted because I mean, it did that their speech, their speech of uh, breaking down what happened is a little, a little too. She point. gave her daughter a script and told her to memorize it. <laughs> Regardless, so the thing, the thing about it is though, even if it were, kids be on that, on that, like on that level, like they do I stuff mean, yeah. like that. It's it's pretty believable. Like I could see it happening. She was daughter. about to make a TikTok and the daughter conveniently brought alright. That aside, I get the general point about kids be saying whatever. Yeah, I mean, do I even ask well actually what was my question for this? Because uh like I said, there's a lot of a lot of uh things happening in this one brief instance. Uh I mean it kind of goes into a, a question of like, is it uh, beneficial to be honest, open and honest with kids. <laughs> wait, wait, that wait they, uh, real quick. Oh, sorry. No, I was just gonna say, did we know it? Did they they bleep the word? Oh yeah, I was gonna mention that. Thank you for reminding me because you could always look to the shade room. Uh, they, her daughter called him a bitch. Oh, okay. And I guess just to give context, you know, in case you didn't fully say the story. So again, this this mother is about to do something. Her daughter comes in. She says uh, she, she wants to tell you what happened before they tell you what happened. Um, she was talking with presumably some other kids, and they were they were bothering her. So she called the other kid's father a bitch because he stays at home and is seemingly the house provide the house take care. Y'all know what I mean. He takes care of the house while the mother goes out and work. And what this mother told her daughter is that men are supposed to be the providers and go out and work. And women are supposed to be the ones that, you know, be at home and take care of the house. 
So, this, and then let up this interaction. And it kind of just gets back to the, you know, question of like, is it beneficial to be very open and honest with kids, knowing well they are just a sponge and they soak up uh, information and will regurgitate it <laughs> unfiltered <laughs> if, if presented with the, uh, you know, appropriate situation. Uh, what do you think about that is? What do you think about this in general? <laughs> It's hilarious. It does seem scripted the more I think about it, but it's hilarious. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just the risk of, or I shouldn't say a risk, but like, when uh, with parenting, it's just something you have to consider. Uh, I would imagine that's just how it goes. <laughs> You're gonna run into these situations, and as you do, you probably, I don't know, it, it, it's probably a balance of knowing what you can tell a kid and um what you might be able to tell them but also convey to them that this isn't something you just shout to the world <laughs> when you come across it like it's just something for you to know mm -hmm. yeah i agree and i guess it was worth asking and probably this is probably what i thought of it originally when i thought it <laughs> let's uh put ourselves in this this uh, mother's shoes <laughs> <laughs> scripted or scripted or not, your uh, your your son or your daughter comes to you with this type of situation. You know, you at one point told them something, uh, and then they went and just blurted it out. <laughs> what what would your reaction be? I mean, you gotta explain the whole like thought process behind what you were saying, um, because I'm sure it wasn't like the mom's viewpoint it on it I'm sure is not as um, black and white as all men who do not go out and provide for their families are bums right. and um, so it was probably a situation where no, no, you the word she used a bitch yeah and <laughs> sorry she, um, yeah she was probably talking to the kid addressing something super specific Maybe she was telling the kid, this is, you know, this is who you should be looking for as, I don't know, the kid seems young, but I, and I don't know that the mother would necessarily be having this conversation, but maybe like who you should be looking for as a, as a husband or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And, and then she just goes and applies it to every, <laughs> every situation, any man who, who doesn't fit these qualifications is, is. So, do, you, do we think that most kids can understand gray areas? <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> so if we if we understand that most kids, if you tell them, you know, if you say all dogs bark, they're gonna think all dogs bark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, and like so it's gonna when it, so it when comes that, with. Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say it comes with age. Well, it comes with age. Um, that yeah, that's the that's the main thing. So you have to know like your child's level of understanding, and you're gonna see it um, based on the actions that they take from what you say in general. So, like I said, this is gonna be like if this were real, it'd be a learning experience for the mom mm -hmm. um, moving forward. Just like in any other situation, any anything that happen leading up to this or after this you learn okay the kid is not ready to to just to digest the nuances of this information yet yeah that makes sense <laughs> i'll just kind of throw up my hot take for a change because <laughs> i even learned a little something from this pretty physical interaction i you either gotta be all in or all out. Like if I ever conveyed a message <laughs> like this to my child, I would be I would have to I would have to accept it. And if somebody and if they say it to somebody and somebody comes to me, I'll be, I'll be like, Yeah, I stand on it. So what's up? <laughs> it's either that or don't don't be honest with kids because you yes, you, all, all kids are different and they do under, they do have different levels of understanding. The safe bet is that they're just gonna take you take what you said for face for face value. 
if, for in this example, if you say that that men are supposed to provide and that women are supposed to stay at home and be the provide or be, be the um, you know, the nurturer and person that takes care of the house, I I could like you could go into a, a breakdown about how different situations maybe the father is disabled or or, or maybe but, uh, the mother would just the, the, or the, maybe the mother would just working at first, but kids aren't gonna like. The thing Again, is, the, the thing on is, average, kids are, aren't gonna, kids are gonna hear the first thing you said. Yeah, men provide, women stay at home. Yeah, but she, I'm sure she didn't say the opposite though. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. <laughs> like, I think she took it farther when she extrapolated the whole thing to basically say that if you don't do these things, you, or if if it appears that you don't do these things, you you're, you're you know there's a problem with you. I mean, it's kind of obvious that she did, though, because if you're a little kid, if you, basically anyone in general, if someone comes at you, you're going to come back at them where you think it'll hurt them. So the girl may not have that thought in her mind that, oh, any dad that um, isn't the breadwinner or whatever is a bitch. She may not think that, but if she's trying to roast the other kid... She's going to say the first hurtful, hurtful thing that pops into her mind. So I don't exactly think that's unreasonable. To... No, exactly. But that's what you can curb. That's what you can say. Hey, that part was wrong. You might still stand on the part where you say oh, okay. that the, the, the man is the provider and, and the head of the house or whatever, however she said it. But I think you can still say that, hey, you can't go around calling people's dad out their name like that. How can you I say mean, that? When, yeah. How can you say that when you don't want to give the ammo? Because she never said to do that. Like she never said. She first of all, she never okay. said that. Okay, but you still gave them the ammo. You still put it in their brain that this is wrong and this is right, regardless of how they use it. You gave them that. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. I'm just. I'm I gonna am, keep it. I'm gonna keep it a book. Nah, I feel I'm like she didn't honestly 100 percent with you, Quest, and your all in or all out take, because even though the kid did take some liberties with what they said, the sentiment was there, and it was given to her by the mother. Okay, but let's say you also and, told your child, don't use, don't swear at people, or don't swear about people. I mean, okay, that's that's different, but I mean, the kid, obviously, they're not in the right in the situation, but... Uh, you can take that example, and it's still not change what I said, I don't think. Yeah, that's... Like well, I'm kid, saying, you can, can still, still be in the, the wrong. Kid. Yes, but... you, that's what I'm saying. You can still put the kid in the wrong. State your piece. You gotta deal with the parents, and state stand on what you said as far as the man being the provider, etc. But you don't have to get into detail on this specific case or whatever because one, you don't know the details of the case, and two, you don't really care about that because you were trying to teach your daughter a lesson about men and how they should be, not necessarily put people down or, or whatever well, what you're saying, saying is... differently hmm? like i'm i'm just trying to figure out the where you're going with that because i do agree with what you said but i don't think quests imply differently unless i misinterpreted like the kid can you can still correct the kid but it what it boils down to is like the take itself because the the parents may not have an issue with the whole get into a argument thing they may have an issue with the whole breadwinner thing or the provider thing and if it comes down to that then yeah no i i think she she can and she stood i think the statement that the the man is a provider first of all i think it could be explained However, to kids, no, to the to the okay. adults that she has to address, and I mean, yeah, to the kid after, not ta- I'm not, to the kid, I'm not talking about, yeah, I'm but I'm, I'm saying to the kid after the fact. But when you said you, she has to stand on it, I thought you meant she has to stand on it and deal with this, the repercussions. But yeah, she can stand on it with the kid. And I'm saying the I believe that for everyone. Yeah, but I'm saying she can stand on it with the kids and with the parents, but she also can tell her daughter where she's wrong in the situation if you st- standing on it is saying that the, what the daughter did isn't wrong that's what i'm saying and that's what i'm saying i don't agree with that wait wait wait, wait. <laughs> so you're saying the daughter did nothing wrong 
I'm saying saying if you believe that, then the daughter did nothing wrong. No, what? No. (laughs) I thought I I thought it was just that's that's just that's that's just my that's just my hot take. Because again, y'all are going into explaining, it's explaining it, but all that just puts a lot of onus on the child. And again, I I we all know there's mature children out there. But the best bet is to believe that a child is gonna take to home and run a thousand miles with it. So it's either you just don't it don't don't get too much into the mud, or you or you you, you stand on it. Um that's just me. Cause what if the mother said that in that what if the mother if said, the mother that, said that, it that, verbatim, it, that's it, one that thing. Sentiment. I mean that's kinda of different. That's different. And I'm I'm I don't wanna I don't we like to just extract, you know, topics and not get too much in them. I'm, if y'all think that my mother sat down and said, so this is the role of a father. A father goes out and provides. No, she was probably, she was probably looking at an example of somebody she knows and some dude just uh, sits on the couch all day while the, while the mom who's a, a registered nurse goes out and works all day. She probably didn't give her, ch- her child the nice version of what y'all think. She probably did say, yeah, he's a bum. He's a B word. Like, well, obviously, I I, I no, still no. think this, this but is the all child scripted, didn't but convey that. I think you do have a point if this wasn't scripted because kids being kids aside, that is kind of a big leap to make. I don't the child, the yeah, but the message. kid didn't the, convey the, that. The kid, when they said the, what the mom said, didn't say they didn't quote the mom as saying the father or that man is a bitch. Right. That's why I don't think the mom said that. Wait, what? She I don't said, know. My mom <laughs> said, uh, yeah. I think his point is she said, My mom said that man is your provider, blah, blah. And then she said, The rest and your dad. Oh. Okay. So I said, or maybe then she said, So I said, or whatever. I, I don't know how she quoted it, but. Yeah, I got you. I, I, if y'all are feel, I'm, I don't know. The, 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 yeah, the, the nuances don't matter, but I, I think you could. I, I think it's. Not fair to assume one way or the other, but if you assume one way, that's fine. As far as what she had, how she conveyed the message. I'm going off. I've heard this type of sentiment from a kid from kids a million times over. That's just that or this type of uh, rationale. Like they'll take a message and run with it. That is true. No, that's that's true. But I, I mean, I don't know. I didn't get that from this video. I got, I got that maybe the mom said, "Man is your provider." Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And then the child How? took that. And then you think that the child of their own volition put put that equation that and went and used that as ammo to mm-hmm. bash another. Mm-hmm. It's possible. All right. All right. I, all right. I do. I see what you're coming from. Kids be taking stuff and doing That's why people stress that you have to be careful what you say around your kids because they will use it. No, they're this. Okay. There this are mother one thousand percent saw an example of this and said that use that type of language for men like that. I, I don't I don't know if uh, I would go that far. The, right. the thing is I right. the thing is I agree with you that what you said happens for sure. Just in the, the just say just in saying the bitch in the first place, like people who swear around their kids and then their kid goes and uses the word and then they get in trouble or whatever and it's like well you use it like that's where they get it from. That type of thing happens all the time, and you even on that. even more specific situations, such as this situation, if she did say something like this, it would be the case. But for whatever reason, as I see this video, I don't read it that way. I read it as she said something, the child extrapolated and went 100 miles and running, and you now she has to deal with the repercussions. Y'all think that she gave him a nice, comprised message of the roles of men? And- I don't think that she definitely did, but I think there's a possibility. That it was something said in passing. It may not have been a negative situation, but the child was in that a. There was no, there was no negative. Child was in a roast and said. I believe it's what the somewhere. child said when they conveyed the message of what the mom said. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm not going back. I'm not arguing. Either way, you could have a scenario where this either thing is the case. So, the point is. You have to be careful what you tell to your kids. And, That's the moral of the story. And maybe the caveat is if you um, if you do tell them something that you know that they shouldn't be spreading, you give them that warning that, hey, be careful who you say this around. 
Yeah, she won't be kids will kind of. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. That's, that's, that's fine. That, that's, that's, fine. That's, that's fine. That's not my advice. That's, that's fine. fine. People know that's not quite that's my advice. That's fine. But when they disobey you, you still have the ammo to say, hey, I told you. Ammo is one thing, but okay, I, I have thought about this scenario. Not this. So you, so you gave scenario. him the gun, but you didn't give him the ammo, but, but they still find a way to shoot. Him. Yeah, because basically what you're saying. From a scriptural perspective, eventually, when Lord's will and if when we have kids, there's going to be things in the scriptures that you need to teach your children that is not PC and is most certainly not a kosher with the beliefs or what's taught I I, this I don't know if I agree with that. Um, I'm, the, uh, ultimately, uh, ultimately, uh, I'm you, ready. What? Cool? There's stuff that oh. we're not going to talk about on the podcast. Yeah. Because there's um, there's no... Nah. <laughs> I'm talking... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't... I, I can say say I don't agree with that. But, and I'm going to be ready to stand on it. That's, that's I know. That's that's my point. Is that's that fine. But You're going to have to 100% stand on it and you can tell your kids all you want. Don't go spreading it, but... The kids, they're gonna spread it. So yeah. Just be... And if they do, I'm still, I'm gonna tell them. I'm gonna tell yeah. them what you're the gonna, results could be. On it, but... I'm gonna stand on it. But if they go and do it, and, I, and there's there's repercussions for it, I'll say I told you, and uh, <laughs> we'll deal I mean, with it. That's, yeah. That's Have a blast. that's nice. Not but... that I mean, not that I'd even I need to say I told you, but I'm going to give them the ability to do the right thing. And if they don't do it, hey, there's repercussions. We're gonna have to deal with them. But so there's a so there can so there can be a wrong thing for something that you told them. Got you. That's not what I said. <laughs> you have right, to let's, use, let's, hold on, hold on. Let's you not, kind let's of not, let's straddle the fence. Hold on, hold on. You have to use wisdom <laughs> in the no, way you not. speak. They have to learn to use wisdom. I mean, in this yeah, Just but like again, everybody does. kids. Like, no. if, okay, 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 okay. That's fine. What they about have this? to learn it. <laughs> They get uh, asked straight up mm-hmm. about <laughs> an <laughs> example, <laughs> and they give their response based on what you told them, and then they get uh, in trouble for it or whatever. Are they still going to, even though you did tell them, you got to be careful how you talk No, to that's how they should people. answer. However... If they're not asked directly, they shouldn't just be going around <laughs> voicing it to everybody that is not trying to hear it. Like, uh, I don't want to start speaking negatively, but I think there might be a fundamental lack of understanding how kids move and operate. Yeah. I don't care. Like, is my, this is my point. I'm, I'm this idiot. is my. Are you saying okay? Are you saying it's either you're saying you shouldn't tell them because this is how they operate, or you're yes. saying, so you're saying you shouldn't tell them at all. I'm saying yes. Do not tell them, or if you do tell them, don't ex- don't expect all this. They're going to understand, or I'm going to come back and say, "Oh well," like there's going to be a, a another. Um, that's what I'm looking for. There'll be another lecture afterwards. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. If they say it, I'm a, and I'm gonna be like, "Yeah, that said that. I believe it too." And we, we I'm with you on that quest. I'm with you on that. I question. agree. <laughs> I agree. Don't sound like it. <laughs> what? <laughs> a, a, Listen, agree I said and, and I said if somebody is usually okay, I agree and we move on. No, I said if somebody okay. said if somebody asked them the question directly and they answer the truth, then I said they should do that. They need to stand on what they. I do. know, but you're talking about this specific scenario. Just in general, if you tell the kid something, they're gonna repeat it, no matter the if it's not in your exact. Uh, Someone asked me about it. I'm not talking about scenarios where the kid, or somebody asked the kid. Yeah, the kid, a kid might, might just say it. I'm a kid playing. might go into school. Uh, the teacher asked them, hey, "What did you do last night?" And they say a billion things. Like it might have nothing to do with nothing, and the kid might say it. Yeah, you have to. You have to almost assume a kid will just yeah, regurg- gotta... regurgitate something you said in passing or otherwise. I get that. at any period for no reason because this kid brain is where it operates that way. That's fine. And I but is that. there no lesson? Like, if, if it's if it's not the way you would approach it, then it seems like there could be a lesson in it. If it's in this case where they're being intentionally hurtful, there is a lesson. I'm not going to go as far as to say 
you got to back them with every single thing they say. And 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 that's fair. Yeah. Like this is like this is an example where you could still you know give let the kid know. Well, you can't be mean to people like that. Right. Right. And my thing would just be, basically, my my message would be in general, don't instigate things. Or if there's something that, listen. <laughs> It's you lost kidding. that kid. You Listen, lost that kid. It, sound, it you, sounded you, like you lost my, the kid didn't even I'm instigate. The kid got. Uh, I'm just letting you know you lost that child already. Listen, I don't. That's not the point. You're, they will learn with time. So whether it's now or whether it's later, if I'm going to tell them so, if there's something I feel is valuable to tell them, but I know there's a caveat, I feel like there's no harm in telling them with the caveat, especially if it's something that I feel. They need to know now. If I feel it can wait, then it can wait. I'm going. That's I'm just true, saying. But my thing is not. My thing is not. The caveat is foolproof, and the child is going to 100% understand. Being a child, they're just they're gonna have it. Yet. But they're gonna realize one day. Oh, I see why my dad said this, this, and this. And that's fine. They they have to grow and learn. But if that's I feel, true. But it's kind of. It depends. There might be things. Pointless. There might be things I. The, you can say it's pointless, but if it's pointless, then I can say it. Like it is, it's not. Hurting it's logical, anything. but it's functionally, it's kind. If of... it's pointless, then it's not hurting any. I mean, it's it's not hurting anything. I mean, you're right. You're As right. As I said, but... they're gonna they're either gonna one day realize it, or they're gonna realize it on their own that oh, I understand why you said that. But it is what it is. Like I don't, I don't see the harm, yeah, man. I, and it's not to it's not me being delusional and thinking. Oh, they're definitely going to do this because yeah, I said it. It's definitely delusion, yeah. Oh, my God. As I said, it's <laughs> because, I mean, we had to figure these things out for ourselves in certain cases. So what the hell is going on, bro? We had to figure these things out ourselves in certain cases. And so we figured out how to move on around certain issues. And it was what it was. Like, so... Whether you hear it directly, <laughs> you... so prepare. So basically, prepare your child to deal with to be in these type of situations. Gotcha. What is that a bad idea? <laughs> like I said, the differences in uh, how you should operate around children based on different experiences, based on uh, understanding. But um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the moral story because I feel like we, I think we all had some like separate views on you. Uh, hey man, salute to, salute to all salute to kids, and they don't even understand. Uh, yeah, I said earlier something about how uh, funny their the ignorance can be. Um, but there's nothing else. We can go to the last joint, I believe. Uh, salute to Drake. Uh, I don't know. I don't think we have to watch that video or study the video. Basically, you know, I mean, time has passed, but, uh, you know, it was the Legends, Drake's birthday in November, uh, October, sorry, October, Great Zone. And, you know, he put out this lengthy uh, birthday message, uh, you know, just going through life. Or just looking over life, his life, and you know, you know, just that, you know, whenever people, whenever as we get older, you know, we look back in life and you know, look at all the phases. I even think I posted something recently about it's like when you take some time and look back at all the phases that you went went through in life, uh, you it really puts into perspective. Um, and there was this interesting thing that caught my attention in this message. And actually, at the beginning of the message, so you don't even gotta dig too deep. I'll just read a bit of it. So. Drake, who is known as Champagne Poppy on social on Instagram, it's Drake. Back in 2007, we used to finesse this Rolls Royce Phantom rental to convince people in the city we were destined to make it. We used to scrap together 5k a month somehow to keep up appearances. And then he goes on, you know, we whipped in, in this I ordered to see Belly, Cash, XO, and to Montreal to our, my first show ever. So, you know, he just goes on and he's in reminiscing. But yeah, those first two lines, and I'm, I'm going to reiterate. We used to finesse this Rolls Royce Phantom rental 
and they scrapped together 5k a month to keep up appearances like this. Now, this was back in 2007. You know, fast forward to 2001, Drake is arguably the most successful person in music. 2011? Like, sorry, this was back in 2007, and now in 2021, 2020. you know, Drake is like the biggest thing since, you know, sliced bread. And it, it's almost like you would say that everything he did back then was just like a success. It was like, it would, he made it. Maybe we made it. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if there's a specific question here, but, um, what do we make of this? Um, cause I, I think I've heard this sentiment before from other artists. Like, this is not necessarily an uncommon thing to, I guess, if we're going to be real, make these outlandish, uh, almost ridiculous purchases to build up the built of an appearance of what you want to achieve in uh, what you want to achieve in life um, so I guess basically is there value to this or should the average person who maybe has a dream of success maybe just stick to the the Nissan Altimas and the uh, Honda Civic they're used to <laughs> wow, that was good. You named two cars that I've owned in the past, by the way. Real subtle. You are exposing yourself. <laughs> hey, man. No, we're not. Even though you, you did for yourself, we're, we're honest on this podcast, so I'm not mad at it. I guess I could have said my cars. <laughs> I didn't you even think. To the, um, I wasn't even thinking about it when you said it. You could have <laughs> stick to the, the Chevrolet Malibus and uh, Dodge? Ford Escapes. Oh, oh yeah, my like... first truck, <laughs> my first car ever. I had a '95 Dodge Ram 1500, the best car I've had to this date. Um, but let's not detract too much. Um, what was the question? Oh yeah, do you think this? It's not an advice, but you think this uh, method uh, is uh, any value in it? Uh, what do you think, Wes? <laughs> um, honestly, I just think it's a risk reward thing, and he took a risk and it paid off. Although 2007, he was in Degrassi before that. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. Let's, 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 <laughs> let's take to go. Drake's specific life. All right, all right, all right. Definitely... So yes, yes. To be fair, um, yeah, no, I think I think it's a risk reward thing. If this is, especially for a lifestyle that he was trying to get into, the what's the reward? Rap world. Um, no, I so, so he took he took the. The risk, obviously, of scraping together five thousand dollars a month, um, although also scraping together, but that's neither here nor there. That's <laughs> I know. What, let's talk about that. How how does one just scrape five thousand dollars? Either way, um, <laughs> he he knew that this is what people in that world. Most people don't even have two k in their bank accounts. I don't know if people realize that. Most people, if most people had an emergency. That required them to pay two thousand dollars. Most people in America would be they, they'd be out of luck. They'd they'd be dead. You're talking about scraping together sixty thousand a year. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. a that's, full that's, salary. That's, 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 yeah. Thank you. Like we like just we don't kind of need to sit back and put these numbers into perspective. That's some people's salaries. That's not the average salary. The average salary. That's not the above especially average salary for especially for black males is uh forty. Like. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Yeah, but if we if we overlook that, um, the idea is that the people in the life that he wanted lived a certain way. It's kind of like a dress for the job you want type deal. Oh, <laughs> so no, he's right. He's right. Yeah. He's right. So I think specific to this type of lifestyle, yeah, exactly. It, it it kind of makes sense. It was an investment so that people would look at him and say. All right, you're doing stuff like you're going somewhere, as he said, keeping up appearances. But but using that example that you just brought, so would you ever recommend that to somebody? If they wanted to like if they wanted to be a a a, a banker or something, would you recommend them to dress like a banker? If they wanted to be a banker, let's say, and they wanted to spend an exorbitant amount of money on a suit, I'm thinking about doing this. Perhaps, <laughs> there you go. bro. What? 
Perhaps. It, uh, it depends on what exorbitant it is. Plus, it's a one-time you're, you're purchase. Going next Plus, it's a one-time per Well, depending on how many suits or whatever, but it's 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 probably more sensible than this. It's not 5K a month. Um, but I want you a really good suit. Which is Don't answer that. I'm yeah. looking it up for myself. Uh, so... Yeah, if they were going to do something which is a basically a dress for the job you want type thing, I wouldn't advise against it. No, I, I'd say make sure you're not, eat, you know, spending yourself out of house and home. But if you can, if you can do it without uh, breaking the bank, I get it. It's it's an investment. <laughs> but for the average guy, I would say don't extrapolate and do what Drake did because you want to do something completely different. You want to. Not only that, even for a rapper, say, who's, who wants to do exactly what Drake did. I mean, not exactly what Drake did, but whatever. They want to get into the music industry or something like that. We're looking at an example of a, a, an extreme example of success. Yeah. Whereas yes. there are myriad examples of failures yes. who did this, yes. probably did the exact same thing. <laughs> yes. So the end goes so a couple last night, the other night. <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah, the problem is you have to know. You have you kind of have to know whether you have whether you have you're to know whether you're gonna <laughs> come on break. now. No. Come on. But the thing, but no, the thing is too, it doesn't even. It. It's come not on. even. It's, it's not even just skill base. It's not a skill base. Everyone thing. knows they're gonna be. Every, everyone believes they're gonna be a Drake. Exactly. exactly. Every artist. Yeah, and you don't even have to be necessarily that skilled at like let's say rapping like technically to be someone who does make it. So. It, it, I mean, the whole thing is kind of a gamble, though. Like, it's like you don't know. It's a, like virality. Like, who's gonna pop? Who's gonna? Who's, it's kind of tough to say. So, <sighs> do you tell someone? Do you tell someone not to try yeah. just because that's a risk that is large to you? Like, I, I would tell somebody five k a month if they were if they were a rapper up and coming. Whether I heard him or not, that's a lot. Like that's insane to try to do. But I would also say that I understand what you're trying to do. <laughs> I don't know. Is there any is there anything that you would that you co-sign someone spending five k a month for that's not directly going into a an income? <laughs> <sighs> I mean. If, I would say no. I mean, it no, would have to be I like a stream it's, of income. Yeah, like it's not a big deal that we wouldn't say it because yeah. we're not. We're not, the only people that I I would say even have the uh, authority to try to suggest this something like this to people are the people who actually did it. And I don't even know if they would recommend it. I don't know if Drake yeah. would recommend this. He to didn't. Someone. He said it's an extreme example uh, in this quote somewhere. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think people would recommend any of this. You got business or tycoons who slept on the the warehouse factory floor or whatever while they were coming up. I mean, you hear people say stuff like this all the time. Six, extremely successful people. But again... But yeah. even like that, like sleeping on the warehouse floor is more of a grinding type thing. Well, not that scraping together money. Yeah, but the scraping part is probably <laughs> it's it's more of a sacri sacrifice than a. It still is a sacrifice to scrape together to, five thousand. Which is yeah, true. Which is true. You pro there's probably a lot of uh, nights where you probably didn't get a you probably didn't eat a exactly. full meal because you. Well, okay, this is what I'm trying to say. On the equivalent of sleeping on the the warehouse floor would be like well, studio time costs money, but if. It would be like you know spending the nights recording mu like music because it seems like being on the factory floor is more like actually actively putting your hand to to, to the craft or to the business. But I get what you're saying. Elon Musk, same thing, sleeping at his desk, not going. Yeah, home. yeah, yeah. Anyway, I want to hear what Ghost had to say. But real <laughs> quick, uh, a quality suit is generally five hundred to eight hundred dollars retail. Which maybe you shouldn't get one re at retail price, but yeah, that's not. I mean, never mind. Y'all, y'all let y'all privilege just <laughs> sneak out real quick. Y'all are crazy. It's not five k a month, is what I was. 
maybe gonna say. Yes, okay, <laughs> that's that's fair. Sorry, go ahead, go. Meanwhile, this mindset in general, I'll say specifically for the rap world, is the most harmful thing <laughs> you can have. Because, yeah, I, y'all kind of covered it fairly well with this is a Drace is the outlier example and dress for the job and all that. But this isn't like a. It's, he said it's outlier, but this is a lot more prevalent than is conveyed. Because not specifically for cars, but specifically for jewelry, chains. Yes. I, it is the stupidest thing I have ever seen with all these rappers that are up and coming, trying to make it, to try to convey that they got it already when they don't got it. They be spending thousands on thousands for earrings, chains, necklaces, whatever. And yeah, dress for the job, whatever, but it's, 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 it's stupid. What okay, the about, interesting you, thing what you, about- What do you rap about if like, you don't it has, got it though? It has no benefit like if, if it was like the suit thing, it's kind of different because you could say, okay, I'm gonna make this investment in the suit, but I want to get an interview with a job I want, and I can wear the suit then. The ju- the chains and the jewelry what if- will go into will go into the <laughs> bars, and the bars yeah. will go into the the A and R or the the labels. Ears. That's, that's such a real. What is, that, I'm, okay. What, that's what, the, in, that's wait, the wait, interview. Wait, wait, wait. What wait, bars wait, wait, about wait, wait, jewelry wait, wait, wait. are really what? making a splash? What? Are really making a difference. <laughs> Stop. Come on, bro. Stop. Stop. It's, it's, it's filler. Yeah, no, it's is. all no, filler. It's, it's, it's filler. Help. What are y'all Stop talking about? Yeah, listen, we don't we don't got to get into specific <laughs> examples, but we realize like it is not the, the the joke that we you know we joke about it, but Meat Mill's career started with like a lot of talk about jewelry and rollies and stuff. Like uh, this is how a lot of rappers be, like people, our whole we, maybe it's not, <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's not us. And it's all but. Oh. but People like to hear these bars. Yeah, the luxury, it sells. luxury, luxury rap. Like it's, it's literally people who. I mean, it's just in general. It, 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 there's a place for them. There's exactly. Definitely a place. There's people who. It's the place is filler. Especially in hip hop. There's, there's nothing who, substantial. No, you no, just listen to it. Okay, okay I'll give an example. It's successful if, if, artists. Yes, if you hear like it's possible for me to hear stuff like that and maybe I'm not thinking along the same lines, but it's still motivating. Like it, it can still be a motivator. There you go. It's no, motivating. What there you y'all, go. y'all, you you had that argument before, and it was just as faulty then. Because what do you mean motivating? What are you it's, talking about? What if okay? What if what if Rick Ross didn't have didn't didn't live any lavishly at all? Like what if if Drake didn't didn't do any like what? My point is, I'm not saying you don't have the bars because you can have them. It's no, fine, you but again, you can't have okay. The bars and then be sitting in a shack with. with okay, first, like, like, first like, of all, wait, wait, no, 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 no. First of all, rather be doing that, y'all act like they people be doing that. I mean, okay, that's why. Well, well, but I ask you, but I ask you, goes. What do you rap about in hip hop if you're not rapping about like gaining okay, something? Okay. okay, okay. I'm not saying you can't have the bars. Or that they're useless because they're they're not useless. Like I said, they're. Filler. And you know what will happen if you rap about that stuff and you're not actually doing. Which it. is what I'm saying. Don't get caught. So let, you can hold on. No, no, no. Let me see. Let me say this. Let me say this. You can do it. You can hide, but don't get caught. Like look, we. Saw, I mean, fine. See? Okay. Oh no no! That I was listening to something with um, what's his, what's the rapper um, ah jeez. Uh, I forget who it was, but he was doing. He was in a uh, in like an Uber Drake, type. Cole, no, 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 no. It was it was a it was a old, like a early two thousands uh, rap rapper. But he was in like he was doing like um like a Uber type situation, and somebody called him out and was like, "Aren't you such and such? What are you doing in this?" Consequence? No, 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 no. It, it was someone more um someone who <laughs> rapped about being you know spending money and doing something like that. But I forget Call it? exactly who. Not uh, most of no 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 it wasn't Sorry. it wasn't oh, a con- it wasn't anybody conscious like but gotcha. but yeah they, they were in the thing and somebody was trying to clown him because he's like what are you doing you're driving Uber and this and that because he lived a life that was not that type of lifestyle you will get ridiculed if you get caught fronting like it's not there's an authenticity like hip hop is is you know people people love to to call you out if you're not authentic like that's what it's about 
So okay. This is I get I get all of that. Don't, I'm not, not artist. Don't get caught. <laughs> I know, this, is another, this is reminiscent of Kanye's uh, come up too. He, we all know that Kanye extensively talked about like you know working at a clothing store and like spending money on things that yeah. really couldn't afford at that time because <laughs> yeah exactly. Okay, so all that aside, because you, you're right, but that's not my point. My whole point is there's there's a place of bars in hip hop, but again, it's not anything that. If a, a studio exec, if he heard that a bar about how much ice you got, he's not going to sit up out of his chair. Wait, who is that? We need to sign this dude right now. No, it's it's just something that it's there and you listen to it and it goes in one ear and out the other because it doesn't mean anything. I no. think you are not grossly <laughs> underestimating labels. <laughs> the, thing, the thing is, though, like, let, imagine this. Imagine this. Dude rolls up in whatever whatever car, whatever he said, Phantom. And they go, he said it goes to his first show, right? And people see him roll up in that. People might see him with some jewelry. People see him around certain people. And he goes up and nobody knows who he is. People are going to be asking, who is that? There you go. And I think that's what he was trying to, partially trying to convey is like, we were trying to keep up appearances so that we could kind of fake it till we make it into this role. Wait, wait. No. Nah, you, that, wait, you let me stretch. let okay, me pick it back. No, whoa, no, no. Piggyback. I'm li- read read his Wait, hold up. Hold up. Go ahead. So I just want to piggyback on that cuz the other thing he mentions here is that he says this was his extreme way of manifesting. He said I needed to see it and feel it and have it to believe that I could see and feel and have anything I wanted. That well, well, I, you know, manifesting, uh, you know, I don't want to go too deep into that, but yeah, we would talk about that. another Yeah. Time. <laughs> but at the same time, People love to manifest. yeah, but at the same time, I can understand the sentiment of trying to put yourself in the position of where you're trying to go. And that's why I was saying with the suit thing, like I could almost see myself trying to become more professional if I dressed more professionally. That is so insane to me. What? <laughs> I got I I mean That'd on a personal most... level on a personal level I got some some workout clothes and I feel like I, I I'm more motivated to work out like I put them on and I feel like oh let me go do something let me like clothes clothes do influence your um you know how you kind of move on certain occasions like especially like like you know putting on a a lab coat or whatever it like it does change your so you tell me if i put on a lab coat i would suddenly want to become a great scientist why are you oversimplifying yeah, <laughs> yeah no, <laughs> y'all, y'all are the that. ones that are saying oh, you if you get a if you get a suit then you want the, this is, uh, yes nobody that's how it goes if you nobody said that we're made it's listen if you dress a certain way, if you see yourself a certain way, you're more inclined to want to adjust yourself to be that thing or to be in that role. Especially it's, if you want to uh, get to that level. Like, you're, it's not just if you put on a yeah, lab coat, you want to be a right. scientist. If you want to be a scientist, get and then you put on that lab exactly. coat. <laughs> Jesus just like Christ. if you want to be that big rapper, and then you drive that big rapper car, that's where that's where the... um. Comparison. Yes. And that's not to say that there aren't other lanes for rap, obviously. Like you could be the conscious rapper, you could be whatever else. And you can fill that role however you see fit, or you can make that lane for yourself. It's an option. But at the same time, it's a real thing. Like it's not just me saying this. Like I, I, this is a thing that people have studied, like in, in terms of wearing certain outfits. I'm gonna roles. need to see them studies. Cause all right, this, this all just sounds <laughs> like. Uh, feel free. This. This just sounds like you've a never, lot of. You've, ex- you've never experienced anything like that. Where it doesn't, if it doesn't I was... necessarily have to be clothes, but but clothes is a good example to me. But like, picturing yourself in a role or doing something that you associate with a certain thing. And feeling more involved or feeling more engaged to do that thing, I've definitely experienced it, and I can see it being true. A picture of myself doing it is one thing, but having more motivation because I gotta 
I want to be an artist, so I got the the beret, and now it's suddenly motivating. <laughs> no, n- never anything like that ever. Okay. The cool. whole concept is kind of absurd to me. Maybe it's low key a song you should try it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially, like, obviously, we know we're not saying here to do this. But especially, you sink some level of funds into this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounds like an awful. There's a balance, I don't think obviously. I have like I said, more productive to say. Like this. I said at first, there's myriad examples of failure for the one example of success. So, obviously, there's a balance. But I'm just saying, there at the same time, there is a place for advice like this. This is very similar to the RDC world thing. But I don't. Yeah, I don't think there's. Mind. I don't think there's any place for this advice to be honest. Because yeah, maybe it would work for the one in ten million who make it big like Drake, but. Mm-hmm. If if you telling people, if you conveying the message that it can work, it may not work work for you, but it can work. You're not emphasizing enough the fact the amount of people that try to do this and fail horribly and end up wasting thousands upon thousands of dollars on whatever they buy to try to play the part and it doesn't work out for them. Well like, okay. So let me say this too though. If you know that the person is a you know glamour rapper type person you can say uh, or I, I might say I see what you're trying to do you know that there's a you know there's a high risk and a low chance of success just based on the numbers but I see what you're trying to do but unless you're telling them don't put those bars in your raps then why would you say I mean like why would you necessarily discourage them from wanting to to, 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 to to do that? Why why would I discourage them? My okay. <laughs> in terms of okay, in terms of I can say that's a lot of money. The chance of success is small. I, do you, you it's can a big say risk. that, but that's that's but but I I can also say I see what you're trying to do. This is what that's you're not about. discouraging enough. That's basically saying Yeah, it's I it's you telling them something they already know in that it's not the smartest thing to do, but there's a chance it works. You're reinforcing what they're trying to do. I didn't say, I mean... Saying, well, come on, you hey, that's definitely I said, reinforcing. I said, I see what you're trying to do. That's, that's reinforcing that's it. Hey, I, fine, but as I said, I tell them it's a high risk and the chances are small, but do you. Like, I'm not going to shoot down your dream. Do you... <laughs> I think ultimately whole, what you're what trying to shoot down their here, dream. I get it. <laughs> I think ultimately what does suck here is like, because you know, we're pushing back for you know grossly right on a lot of aspects. If you just look at probability, I mean, which most of us do you lose probability when we make decisions. You know, it'll you would lean more towards not making those risks. But obviously, the thing that sucks here is just like, if you if you have that mindset of what Ghost talking about how do you make it because mm-hmm. if you talk to any because if you talk to anybody that is that's like you know crazy wealthy or crazy successful they took risk like those are, like it's almost like they go hand in hand success and risk so you can take I, risks but I'm they should be curious to know what that balance is like that's a i mean yeah no one really knows that balance aside from people that make it but you can take risks you can take plenty of risks without being stupid about it this is my whole thing in that risk <clears throat> implies you like no, you can't no, argue. No, no, Let's no, not no, argue no, 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 no. You put calculated you, risk. Calculated Logical risk. You put a number risk. on it. You put a number on it. But who's to say what's stupid? Below five percent? Above? Where's the percent? That's that's subjective. I know. Okay. What I'm saying is, I don't even have a problem with the specific amount. Like the five thousand for Drake. It's a lot. But again, he was making the grassy money, whatever. So we probably had. I'm not going to say enough, plenty to spare, but he was doing better than the average person. So I'm not going to off the bat say that a specific number is crazy. But what I'm talking about is I've seen plenty of people, so many people go above and beyond. I know I know what job they have. I know how they live in and they still making these risks uh, that they might think are uh, will be worth it in the end. But it's it's not. Like you can, 
you can do what y'all are saying about trying to live the part without making yourself bankrupt you might have to do it on a smaller scale and you won't be going like as all in but i'm gonna tell everyone who i interact with in a scenario like this that if you're like the rdc thing like uh spending or trying to buy a building or trying to rent a place out that you don't got the money for in the hopes that you'll make it it's it's not it's not a smart idea even it's if it fine. works out we, for we you we got it we don't we don't have to keep rehashing things. i don't think y'all do got it because it sounds like no, y'all no. gonna be telling people do you listen well i got it the risks are theirs to determine not mine i can tell them it's not likely well then we are talking about it from like a like, yo y'all give him no, no. you just give him bad advice hey listen can... listen i'm not listen i could i probably would have told drake that he uh, not specifically but i probably would have told him you're bugging it, the risks i mean the, the, the no the you would have told him not, I see what you're trying to do. Do you? I told you. <laughs> nah, you can't. You That's out. exactly what you're you said. Out, you're pulling out one statement or two statements. I you said, said that one statement about 10 times, by the way. Okay, so you're just going to exclude the part where I said the risk is high. Okay, okay, yeah. You you tell Drake the risk is um, you, there's a very low chance of this happening, blah, blah, blah. Bro, I see what you're trying to do. Do you? Which at the yes, end of the day is positive reinforcement. Okay, fine. I. I, I don't want to keep no. I don't want to keep rehash, rehashing things, but I will say, you know, you, you know me, I do prefer a person that stand on one side of the fence, which he, is fine. He kinda, he's kind of saying you are you are saying, do oh, it. okay. The way like, that people's mind works is that if you, if you tell them something they want to hear, they'll ignore all the warnings you give before yes, that, so which is that. fine. Because, tell them. Which is fine. They can hear the they can realize the warning after the fact. I don't really care. Because I told them the full picture, and my point is, I'm not going to tell someone, "Don't pursue your dream," because I'm. It's not my place to do that. Like, if this is what you think what? you need to do, go do it. Like, that's no, no one boys said, with this no, person, though. No one's it's saying, your don't place pursue. to. Well, I, I don't want to say it's your Both place, to say, but you should try to be look out for them. And you saying Both that the onus won't be on you, which it won't. He, be. Won't, he wouldn't. He wouldn't recommend risk, or it would be calculated risk. That's the only thing. Bro, that's just that, wrong. That, that calculator risk is like weird to me. But I'm not even saying fine. don't take risks, but you're saying that you'll tell them that, and then if they, it's not on you to uh, shoot down their dreams, and if if fail, if, if they crash and burn, then it's on them, which it is. But your advice didn't help them rethink anything. You told them what they want to hear, so it's, all right. it's pointless I mean, if, advice. Okay. All right, all right, if, all right, all right. The, one, last, the one, one last, one last thing. statement, two statements yeah. ends the whole thing. I mean, it's all they hear. That's fine. But the other thing I wanted to say, just this, this last thing, is that we're kind of neglecting the part where he said that this helped him to put himself in the place where he needed to be to make the music that he needed to make, or to you know to craft it, do his craft the way that he needed to do it. So there's also that aspect where. And it's like, you know, uh, let's extrapolate it to instruments. Getting a new instrument or a new, you know, pedal or whatever, there is a motivation that comes along with it. There's a creativity that opens up. So being... Instruments be expensive too. Yeah. And so like, I understand that from a, a creative standpoint, if you use that to fuel a mindset and fuel a creativity and fuel these things i can understand that as well and we're not really giving that any credence we're just saying oh it's all about you know appearance or, or we talked a lot about appearance and, and dressing for the job and i mean it comes it comes along with the dressing for the job to be an internal motivation as well but um i just wanted to say that all right all i know is is that if my boy who i'm telling this to is one of the many people who will likely fail in trying to if you're trying to be as big as drake he's gonna look at my advice and he's gonna look at your advice and he's gonna be looking at you kind of funny yeah. if you told that, you basically didn't tell him anything and that's and that's the, that's the last thing i wanted to say um or i wanted to I, let's not keep reacting this, but do you want to 
clear up your advice one more time, Wes, to make sure you're you're clear on where you stand. Or you I'll can... say the same thing. <laughs> it's a big risk. It's a lot of money. Chance of success is low, but do you? Gotcha. That but is ringing. <laughs> oh, like less. We got you. We got you. We got you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just. I mean, I guess you got to salute Drake, even though he's kind of throwing fits on him as well. You know, I think he'll get away from those lawsuits scot free. But anyway, um, yeah, I think this is definitely something that you know we'll come back to and people will, you know, forever kind of go back and forth about because. Even though it kind of seems like there may not be a balance, I think people will want to get to that balance of like, you know, risk and things really just could be a lot. Um, but yeah, <laughs> man. I think we should have probably t- extrapolated this out to something other than rap, but more. But by the rap. I mean, I think. I mean, I think we tried. No, no, we did. I think, I think, I think, I think the dress, I think the, the dressing for the job you want. Yeah. I, I think that like the last minute you even brought up a good example of like if you were to buy an instrument. Yeah. Like if you want, if you want to be a musician, and you know, you actually scrap up money and actually bought the instrument, uh, bought the, the the instrument you want. You know, now it's that you you can end up sinking however how much money into like yeah something like that. Uh, and now so this is something. That? Calculate. Like, obviously, this is, calculate. And obviously, <laughs> you can calculate it. And obviously, that'll be this will be something we'll come back to. So uh, it's just fine if we don't get everything right now. Um, but yeah, if there's nothing else on this, which I'm pretty sure <laughs> there obviously could be a lot more on this. So we'll just call it right now. We'll, we'll go to music. <laughs> oh Lord. back i just don't have to say that because really there's no <laughs> there's no break in between when we do the topics and we do music but anyway dope records hella dope records on this week in particular and it was like a nice lot of variety i have an idea about the uh, uh recommendations that i want to run by you but throughout y'all but i'll tell you that after um but aside from that is there are there any other recommendations uh, outside of music that we have this week? I don't. Honestly, mine's gonna be Halo Infinite. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Recommending people play Halo. I'm not gonna lie, I would, I would dead ass uh, get it if I could. It definitely, like, everyone's really having a blast with it. So. They ain't got Steam on Apple? You can't get Halo. Oh, damn. I don't think I could play Halo, Halo or a game like that on my computer in particular. But yeah, speaking oh, of, if you, you want to run some rounds after this post. I'm down. Anyway. Uh, if there's nothing else, um, it's worth asking. What, if anything... Are we looking forward to coming up in the future? A few days off. Oh yeah. End of the week. Yeah, that's probably the one. So so, I have a weird one for me just because it's me. <laughs> but there's a there's a movie dropping soon. Um, about like the Gucci company like backstory and for some reason or another that trailer caught my attention <laughs> really? I mean I do want to see that movie actually but I'm just surprised it caught your attention doesn't seem like something that'd be for you but what do I know? I, I think it's because like you know I'm looking look into fashion and it seemed like they could oh. be gas and some stuff oh the gotcha. Gucci movie? House of yeah. Gucci? Yeah, or I don't know if that's what it's called, but yeah, that sounds about right. It has the dude from uh, Star Wars and Black Clansman. Um, <laughs> I forgot he was in that. <laughs> and, I don't know if he uh, wants to put that one too high. Yeah, I, I know, I know. I was asking that in. And Lady Gaga. And yeah. like Al, Al Pacino. Al, yeah, yeah, they got a, they got a star studded cast. Yeah, I know that's like corny to say, but yeah. So I might actually. Uh, 
I think that, I don't know if they're going to be on streaming services, so we're going to have to I mean, see that close to that. Anyway, that, that movie looks like I, I want to see. I'm looking forward to that. I'll see, I'm automatically critical of movies where you know, like, the, where the trailer, from the trailer, you can tell it's going to be about, like, a woman being a boss. It just... Uh, 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 uh. Can you uh, re- rephrase that a little? <laughs> we are recording. <laughs> it reads a bit, oh, um, a bit maybe feminist, and uh, yeah, I'm a, heavy-handed. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll stand by your side. I kind, I tend to agree. I think the only reason why it'll work here is because that's that's literally the Gucci story. Mm. In so many words, obviously. Um, apologies, apologies to all the fans, <laughs> fans and listeners. Uh, I don't have a quote of the week, um, so I guess I'll, I'll uh, table that to y'all. Do y'all have any quotes of last week? This is where a nice sound bite of like, meh, meh, meh. <laughs> I mean, but it's fun, ultimately. <laughs> The, the name of the podcast kind of uh, fills the gap in when we don't necessarily have any good advice to give. Um, but before we wrap up, um, oh yeah, you know, earlier we were talking about uh, Mr. Drizzy's B Day. You know, we can't hear us, we can't really step past what day it is today. Oh, is it all Our right? very own it November right? very own. Today is Ace's birthday. So everybody, you know, everybody out there, everybody give Ace a, you know, salute. Ha- happy 365. However you, you know, the cool way to these days to say, you know, happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. birthday I didn't even know. Thanks. <laughs> Zero. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, no. I, oh, oh. All right. All right. All right. Every, that's, all, that's all the way. Oh, damn. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on that Kevin Hart right now. I need to stop. Yeah. <laughs> that's no. So much so we're going to Euro step past that. But, yeah, I you know, more be. And, and, not, and not trying to make it like a, not trying to like make a topic up on the fly, but, you know, uh, Similar to what Drake did, is is there any like point in your like point in your life that you kind of like think look back to, or looking back to like recently and like you know a time where you where you really thought you were in a mix, but now it's like now it, you, know, you look back on it, and it's not even that crazy anymore. I mean, yeah, I was jobless for a year out of college, <laughs> and uh, trying to get into my career path and thinking that's never going to happen and now I'm right on it so Man, that's real talk and I was joking with you about that because like I don't even really remember the era <laughs> but yeah no, that's really that's real talk like a lot of people can probably definitely relate to that like so yeah maybe maybe one day we'll kind of deep dive more into like our story I know we are somewhat anonymous on here, but that's that's definitely something that a lot of people could probably um, can relate, relate to and like like to hear more about. But yeah, again, salute to you. Contrary to what other people are saying, 30, <laughs> 30 is probably not a big deal. I guess I guess in terms of like maybe starting a family, but like anyway. anyway. If you're a woman, that'd be different. I'm a- <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, uh, yeah, regardless of anything else, thank to y'all for coming on here and doing this podcast thing. I think this episode was particularly really especially dope, but that just might be me. We covered a lot of things up here. Uh, thank you to any and all listeners, and salute to, like, when I post, like, the podcast episodes, people that, like, like it or repost it, that hella means a lot. You know, we hope that dual listening, 
you know, you learn something new, gain a new perspective. Or if anything, we're just entertained. And if all of none of that happened for you, then all we have to say is, you know, be warm and be filled. Thank you again.